Okay, so this is the spreader bar that I was working on the last uh, day or two. Um, it's not done, but it's done for now. Um, it's, uh, you know, basically usable at this point. I got a little bit left to do on it yet. Um, but uh, figured I'd just show it real quick and uh, kind of explain my thought process behind this. Um, which, I don't know if anybody cares or not, but, uh, so the whole point to this is to be able to have two spots that I can pick from, um, off of one center, uh, connection. Um, because I put this together with the specific purpose of, uh, pulling cabs off pickups. Um, and, uh, so these two spots right here are just a little bit wider than a pickup cab is um, because I want the sling angles uh, from the cab going straight up and down versus at a very sharp angle which is what I had to do last time I pulled a cab and uh, crushed in the side of the cab a little bit but uh, on that individual one it was okay because it was a jump cab anyways but um, and then, you know, this thing is going to be handy for uh, doing other shit as well, too. So, but anyways. Um, so, yeah. The whole point of this is to be able to have the two spots there that you can run, like, vertical um, sling legs from off of a center connection point. And what you can do is have, like, one connection point just say on the top of uh, the spreader bar right here but the only problem with that is it gets kind of uh, like floppy side to side where if you have a short little sling like so um, between the spreader bar and your crane hook for lack of a better term um, then it lowers the center of gravity um, versus the uh, pick point on the spreader bar which hopefully I'm explaining that properly like you know this is our vertical distance on the spreader bar uh, right now and the center of gravity um, you know I don't know exactly but I'm assuming is somewhere down in here so we have a good vertical distance between the center of gravity and where we're actually picking from if we were picking from say you know right here or something like that then we would have a much shorter vertical distance between the pick point and the center of gravity and then the spreader bar would get floppy um, and would sway around a whole lot more hopefully that's explained in a halfway decent manner um, but um, so yeah so this is it kinda from further back here and then uh, I'll kinda show it a little bit closer um, so I did okay on setting it up. It's not perfectly level. I'm a little bit heavier on one side, so um, evidently I fucked up somewhere um, a little bit on the positioning of these things. Um, and uh, so, like I was saying, I uh, TIG welded this all together just to, you know, get more practice with it and everything. I haven't TIG welded in a very long time. So you can kind of see like this is, you know, some of the first ones here. And then this was me start like starting to remember how to TIG weld again. Um, I, uh, I used to do a fair bit back in the day and uh, used to be, you know, half ass good at it. But um, unfortunately, I just, you know, don't do it as much as I should anymore. Um, so yeah, that one's just single pass right there. I'd, come back and put a few more on there because as you can see on that side I got um, a couple more but so I guess uh, something to talk about here right quick um, and I actually bought uh, a couple crane scales because I kind of wanted to test this more and every like not test it but um, see it in practice I suppose if you will 
Um, so sling angle being the angle between these guys, um, as the sling angle goes further out, you increase the tension on the individual legs. Like the weight of the load itself doesn't get any heavier, but the tension on the sling on the sling legs will increase as you start to get steeper and steeper and steeper sling angles. Um, most slings, well, every sling I've seen actually, is rated at its uh, full working load. Let's say, like for this guy here, let's say it's 5,000 pounds. I think it's actually like 4,700 or whatever, but let's say it's 5,000 just for round numbers. If your disc, if your angle from vertical, so like if this was vertical right here, if you're 60 degrees that way, um, it will be, uh, it, it will still be 5,000 pounds for this sling here being a two leg sling. And so an easy way to tell if you are 60 degrees is a, uh, is a equilateral triangle has 60 degree angles on it. And so in the name there, equal, um, the distance from your two pick points here would need to be equal to the distance from your sling connection here. And so you can see our sling leg is 28 inches and our pick point distance is 30 inches. So we are a little bit, um, I don't know, under, over, depending on which way you want to look at, look at it. Um, so if I can find in the book here right quick, um, cause I kind of nerd out on all this stuff. Um, if you can't already tell, um, So we are over under six degrees, like I said, I guess it depends which way you want to look at it. So, and uh, I have this, this sling here is a 732 inch. And so on a double leg, if we were 90 to 60 degrees, can I get that in the frame there? If we were 90 to 60 degrees, we would be uh, 4,700 pounds. We are over that. Um, so. Uh, we'll just jump to the next one and we'll say that we're at 3,800 pounds. Um, again, hopefully I explained that in a half-assed intelligent manner um, in a way that doesn't confuse the shit out of everybody. But, um, so for my purpose, that's going to be fine. I'm not going to pick up anything near that. And then, of course, um, if you just simply were to put a longer sling on there, then you could uh, pick up more anyways, um, or you could pick up more, but these uh, anchor hooks, or whatever you want to call them, that I have on the end here are only rated for one ton a piece anyways. Um, so, you know, you're limited by your weakest link, which um, in this case is these guys here. So, you know, each of these rated for one ton, 4,000 pounds, and then the sling at that angle is rated, let's say, at 3,700. So, um, you know, probably in halfway decent shape there as far as that goes. Um, I guess I'll show here um, what I was working on. yesterday with the mag drill um, was uh, was a center connection point here because of course doing this here is cool because like I said it stabilizes out the uh, spreader bar but of course it adds a lot of vertical height and so if you don't have the option for the vertical height then having a connection right here would be really nice. And so I got a bunch of holes in a piece of 3 8 plate right there. And uh, I need to cut this down a little bit, just like the other ones here, so it fits a bit better. Um, and then plug weld those, just like I did the other ones. And then have a um, piece of uh, one inch plate to go on top there, so that you could run a shackle through here and pick up just directly 
off the center of it if you didn't want to have the upper sling on it. Um, and I guess too, I'll uh, show you right quick the difference between um, like a normal screw pin shackle. between a normal screw pin shackle and the one that I have on here. So uh, the strongest portion of this sling here is actually these shackles. Um, yeah, so you can... See right there, working load limit, five ton. Uh, these are Columbus McKinnon shackles and for their size, um, their super alloy or whatever they call it, um, are stronger than normal shackles because you can see this is a 5.8 rated for 5 ton versus a Crosby 5.8 rated for, it's kind of hard to read with the powder coat, three and a quarter ton. But anyway, so you can see this is a, a bolt type shackle and um, If it was installed in a more permanent manner, um, they do send them with uh, cotter pins. And these are some really fucking kick-ass cotter pins. These are like unbelievably strong for their size. Um, they're actually kind of a pain in the ass to bend back and forth. But what I did was put um, just little linch pins in here because uh, for me and what I'm gonna do with this, I wanna be able to um, you know, move these shackles around and everything faster. Um, like, you know, say faster than a cotter pin, but I like the added security over a standard screw pin shackle. Um, so, and I guess hopefully this is obvious here that with the bolt in and uh, whatever retention method you have, um, you know, if you're actually doing everything by the book, it probably has to have a cotter pin. Um, versus just a linch pin like this, but don't take my word on that. But so hopefully it. Well, I guess I can just do this. So the advantage to this is that the bolt can rotate completely and totally independently of the shackle, obviously, because this is just a bolt. So if this was moving around and all that kind of stuff, you know, jostling around and everything. Um, having the bolt type with a retention on the end is a little bit more permanent and a little bit more secure for an application like this versus a screw pin shackle. Because in theory anyways, um, if you know, say there wasn't much weight on this, um, this uh, screw could actually back out. Um, whether that would happen under full load, probably not, because um, three and a half, uh, what, what did I say, three and a quarter ton. So, uh, you know, just over, what, 6,500 pounds, or not over, that is 6,500 pounds or whatever. Um, so if you were to put 6,500 pounds on this thing, are you really going to be able to turn this, this uh, screw? You know, probably not. Um, but in some weird circumstance, maybe that could happen. Um, so for this, um, that's why I wanted to go with that. And, uh, this is not much slower with the linch pin on here. Um, so I don't really see that being a problem. And, uh, quite frankly, it just makes me feel a little bit better. Um, I guess two... I'll show these a little bit closer because these are different than most of the other ones that I've seen out there. So you can see this obviously has a different shape to it than most of them do. Um, there's a lot of different names for these. Um, I've heard them called anchor hooks, excavator hooks. Um, I'm sure there's some, you know, more proper name for them. 
Um, but I really like them for an application like this where you're welding it onto something. Because, you know, yeah, granted, you could just have, like, a eye on here and put a shackle through it. But, you know, say I weld on an eye all the way at the top like that, you can see that, you know, the bearing surface is almost at the bottom here. This raises it up uh, higher. And they are very uh, fast to deal with. So if we take another uh, sling, another master ring here, that's all that's involved in putting it on. It is this style here is a little bit more of a pain in the ass to uh, remove the sling, which I actually really like actually, because um, you know, of course, it has a latch. But even if this latch were to, you know, get broken or something like that, for one, you can get replacement parts. Um, but just by the shape of this uh, hook here, it would, you know, um, it would help to keep it down in the bottom of the hook. And um, it would actually, you know, kind of be a, uh, kind of be a challenge for whatever you have in here to come out, even if the latch was missing. Um, but yeah, so that's obviously a lot faster than messing with a shackle or something like that. Um, and uh, so like I was saying, my main purpose behind this spreader bar here is um, uh, picking up cabs, but uh, I also am probably going to use it for uh, picking up plates of steel and everything. And uh, normally, of course, I always like to get, you know, really good quality shit and everything, but uh, I found some uh, plate clamps on eBay for dirt, dirt cheap. Um, and they're actually a copy of the Crosby uh, plate clamps. Um, and I can't, at least right now anyways, afford the Crosby ones, but, um, and I guess I'll maybe make another video about the plate clamps and see if they actually work worth the shit and everything in the future, but, um, these are really cool because, uh, just the way that they're shaped and everything, they do actually fit a pretty good sized plate clamp like so. But as you can see there, they're kind of a pain in the ass to um, detach whatever it is out of the hook. Um, and uh, so these hooks are Columbus McKinnon, just like the shackles that are on here. And like I said, these are the one ton versions. And uh, what I really like is that they also fit a three quarter inch shackle. So if you just simply wanted to change the direction, like instead of your sling running this way, you wanted your sling running this way, you can just put a three quarter inch shackle on here um, this is the, you know, it, it's, it's really kind of like a perfect fit for a three quarter inch shackle, which is really nice. There's not too much side to side play or nothing like that. But yeah, so there she be, and um, when I actually go to uh, pick shit up with this for the first time, I will video it, and uh, I guess that way if my welds were total dog shit, and it blows apart and crash and burn and kill the bus full of pregnant nuns, then uh, hey, at least I'll get it on video.